morning assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam sir good morning sir good morning now coming to the one the number just like case of it may uh, that is monopolistic product is concerned uh, product is Excuse me, sir. Your voice is breaking a lot. Is breaking. so can you confirm that uh, now the voice is clear or not no sir it's, it is not clear sir it's actually breaking a bit like there are some breakages in your voice while you're speaking okay
I assume now that uh, um, uh, my voice is clear now, or is it still cutting yes, off? So it's better than before. Okay, so, oh, slightly better. Thank you very much. So, so the thing that I want to discuss with you is uh, monopolistic competition. Uh, the main characteristics that differentiates a monopolist from the rest of the market structure, the differentiated product. Uh, as far as the entry is concerned, it is easy. Any new firm Excuse can me, enter sir? into the uh, market. And, yes. So you, yes, your, your screen is not visible. The, the screen is not visible. Yes, sir. The slides are not visible. Slides are not visible. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, slides okay. are visible, but uh, uh, your voice is not clear. Now it is visible, sir. Now it is visible. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So I think uh, today I have a bad connection. <laughs> so uh, I know that um, the problem is from my side. The connection is not very good, I think. So just bear with it. Uh, so these uh, these are the uh, the characteristics of a monopolistic competition. Uh, the first one is the number of uh, firms are very large. Uh, the product is differentiated. Product is differentiated means uh, uh, the product manufactured by firm A is slightly different uh, or they try to be different from the rest of the market. So every firm tries to differentiate or uh, tries to be different from the rest of the market as far as the product is concerned. <coughs> uh, so product differentiation is the main characteristic of monopolistic competition. Product differentiation plays an even more crucial role in monopolistically competitive industries. Why? Because tacit collusion is virtually impossible. What is tacit collusion? Uh, tacit collusion. Tacit collusion happens when several play players in a particular industry uh, make an agreement which is implicit which is not explicit but implicit uh, and they try to you know exploit the consumers and customers say for example uh, you might have noticed in case of telecom uh, uh, telecom players like geo airtel and vodafone whenever uh, 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 one, one player increases the tariffs the rest of the uh, players also raise the, uh, the raise the tariffs so as if there is some kind of uh, unwritten agreement between them. So, so that is an example of oligopoly because there are only three players. So, but as far as uh, uh, monopolistic competition is concerned, since the number of players in this industry is very large, tacit collusion is not possible. Not possible. So tacit collusion in, in, in uh, uh, monopolistic competition is not possible. So how they uh, then how they compete with each other? Then they try to differentiate their products from the rest of the uh, market's product. So uh, uh, tacit collusion is virtually impossible when there are many producers. Tacit collusion is possible if there are less players, less producers, less marketers. But since the, the players are very large in size, in number, so it becomes difficult to achieve an, uh, you know, uh, collusion among themselves. Hence, product differentiation is the only way monopolistically competitive firms can acquire some market power. So market power or pricing power can only be achieved. Market power is used synonymously with pricing power. So market power or pricing power can be gained only through product differentiation. 
product differentiation. The difference can be in packaging, the difference can be in pricing, the difference can be in uh, uh, the products where they are sold, the location, the four P's of marketing, I mean price, place, promotion, uh, through branding, uh, through creating some uh, different image in the minds of the consumers. So that is product differentiation. So how do firms in the same industry, such as fast food vendors or chocolate companies, differentiate their products? So even if the, say for example, a chocolate, uh, in, even in case of chocolate, uh, uh, the, the, the thing is same. I mean that cocoa, the, 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 uh, the raw material from which the chocolate is, is made is same. But even in that case, companies try to differentiate their products from the rest of the uh, uh, producers or, or, or marketers. Uh, so just think how, say for example, in case of hotels, in case of restaurants, the dishes that they offer normally are same, but even in that case, they try to differentiate their offerings from the rest of the uh, uh, market's offerings. So is the difference mainly in the minds of the consumers or in the products themselves? So sometimes, the difference in the product is only in the minds of the consumers not uh, and as far as uh, the actual product is concerned uh, the product is same but the differentiation exists in the minds of the consumers and that differentiation uh, that difference uh, is created through marketing through branding through advertising through different marketing communications uh, so so consumers perceive the products of different companies to be different. Although in, in reality, they may be same. In reality, they may be same. So sometimes the differentiation is uh, only, uh, you know, perception, uh, perceptual difference as far as the actual difference, as far as the product features, product uh, uh, characteristics are concerned, they, may, they are same. What is marketing? So marketing is all the activities necessary for a firm to sell a product to a consumer. So all activities that are necessary for a firm in order to sell a product to the market, uh, all those efforts are collectively called marketing. And uh, product differentiation is created through marketing. Uh, advertising, brand name, color, style, safety features, taste, packaging, Purchase terms, warranty, guarantee, location, uh, hours of opening, etc. All these are components of marketing because all these are the tools in the hands of the producers or marketers or firms or companies through which they can create product differentiation. So through advertising, brand name, color, style, safety, all these things are used to create a product differentiation. And this happens in the monopolistically competitive market. So can you, uh, I'm just asking you uh, okay, for an example, can you give an example of monopolistically uh, competitive market where product differentiation is the main feature? So soap industry. Uh, okay, yes, soap industry, uh, the, the formula for soap is almost uh, same, uh, whether it is manufactured by Hindustan Unilever or it is manufactured by Bajaj or, I mean, uh, uh, only the difference is in the packaging, in the name, in the uh, sometimes, of fra sometimes fragrances are different, the kind of fragrance that they put in that, uh, but uh, as far as their function is concerned, different soaps, may not be different from each other uh, so much. But uh, they try to create a difference in the minds of the consumers that some soaps are of high quality and some soaps are of uh, low quality. But if you go to uh, the gold chemistry, or ornaments. Uh, gold or, yes, gold ornaments. Uh, whether you purchase uh, jewelry from Tanish or you purchase uh, from uh, any, uh, for example, Gitanjali to bankruptcy ho gai, wo to bhag Gitanjali. There are some other brands of, uh, you know, gold jewelry also, apart from Tanishq. So, PC jewelers. Uh, PC, 
Easy Jewelers is a local jeweler in Aligarh. Malibar Gold. Malibar Gold. Malibar Gold. Okay, okay, okay. So all these, uh, I mean, gold uh, ornaments, gold jewelry are basically same. There is no difference as far as the quality is concerned. The difference exists only in the minds of the consumers because they perceive that if they have purchased something from, uh, uh, say, Tanishq, then uh, they have some surety in their minds that uh, it will be you know of good quality uh, and they may not be cheated as far as the quality is concerned um, so things like that can we add a uh, loan and a uh, uh, loan industry or uh, we can add uh, uh, like uh, insurance in this Yes, most of insurance uh, insurance is slightly different, but as far as the market loan uh, financing and whether we take financing from ICIC uh, uh, or SBI or Quota, it is uh, almost uh, you know same. Uh, there might be some change uh, difference in the terms and conditions in the some some minor difference in the interest rate, but uh, almost it's same. The, the offerings are almost same. So the banks are also an example of monopolistic competition because uh, uh, the services that are offered by different banks are same. Uh, I mean, internet banking, uh, the ATM card, saving account, uh, um, uh, recurrent deposit, fixed deposit, all these things are, you know, the offerings are same. So uh, that is also an example of uh, no, uh, monopolistic. Product differentiation is also a very important aspect for garment industry as well, because they mainly ride on recognition of their brand name and uh, the differentiation between their products on the basis of marketing, advertising, color, style and things as such. See, uh, as far as garment industry is concerned, garment is a commodity. Commodity means uh, it is very difficult to to differentiate one's offerings uh, from the offerings of the rest of the market. So that is why there are few brands that exist in the textile industry in India. Say, for example, Lux. So Lux. So the the uh, un, uh, the undergarments offered by Lux uh, are uh, you know uh, different from the. Uh, just one minute. My audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, sir, okay, you okay. are. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. So, for example, uh, Lux Industries in India. Another example could be Page Industries. Uh, can anybody tell me uh, what Page Industry? Uh, what is the brand name of the Page Industry? The company name is Page Industry, but what does it manufacture? So do you mean paper mills, like the one who which produces papers? No, no, no. There is a company. Uh, the company's name is Page Industries. Page P A G. Sir, socks. Sir, sir and uh, the socks, loungewear. Yes. Like yes, uh, menswear, menswear. Okay. So, so Lux is one example, and uh, Page Industry is another example. Um, then, uh, if we coming to the garment, there are so many. I mean, as, if we go to the actual uh, uh, products, it is it is very difficult to differentiate the product of one company from uh, another company because the fabric is almost same, uh, almost same. So, so when the thing is such that uh, differentiation is very difficult, that industry is called. Commodity industry, commodity industry. In commodity industry, um, uh, the prices, I mean, commodity industry means perfect competition. So in perfect competition, the margin is very low. There is a lot, there, there is a lot of competition between different players and differentiation is also not possible. But there, uh, some companies are trying to differentiate uh, themselves. There are some branded stores uh, uh, for uh, different brands, for example, if you come, uh, if you, uh, different uh, 
players in that industry jeans garments uh, i mean uh, denim i mean uh, uh, the denim textile so there are different brands in that industry but if uh, so that why they are brand because uh, uh, they have differentiated themselves from the rest of the market so now uh, they are not commodity market they are not perfect competition but they have elevated themselves to a monopolistic competition where they have differentiated uh, their products from the rest of the market and so to uh, so to be specific i was actually talking about fast uh, fast fashion brands such as zara h&m and forever 21 because uh, they are fast fashion brands so the way they work is quite similar but yet they rely on product differentiation and uh, their brand name and marketing of uh, various sorts so as to uh, have a good consumer hold in the market okay okay yes that can be an example of monopolistic competition uh the example that you have given zara and uh, other players like that um uh, that that's correct that's correct but in general uh, if uh, you are talking about very specific example of fast fashion uh, but um, i mean textile in general is a commodity industry uh, and a perfect market industry not monopolistic right sir uh, that is understood uh, thank you uh i mean uh, I, i just want to highlight one thing here that uh, one of the uh, shows uh, right now that is coming on sony tv uh, by the name of shark tank india uh, in that uh, if some some of you might have uh, uh, seen some of the episodes of that so one of the thing that they focus on is uh, this product differentiation they they and they ask about competition how many other players are there in so, this uh, uh, how many uh, uh, this product is available in 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 other countries or not how many other companies are uh, in the same industry what is your profit margin so basically they are trying to you know uh, uh, know they are trying to know about uh, their product differentiation so, so we can say that product, uh, product differentiation, differentiation excuse yes. me sir uh, sir yes, we yes. can say that they are trying to like i don't know if i'm right or not but we can say now that they are uh, trying to search for that unique selling point because every product in the industry might be same but they are searching for that one unique thing in their product that will make them different from the industry am i right sir yes actually what happens uh, competition kills profit this is the basic rule basic i mean principle if there is there is a lot of competition then profits will be eliminated so the so if they are able to differentiate themselves through some unique offerings through uh, somebody has written here usp unique selling point so that cannot be copied so the perception if we create some differentiation perception in the minds of the consumers that cannot be copied easily so if i have a good perception of zara so uh, it cannot be you know copied from my mind so that is why uh, that acts as a pricing power those who have a brand they have a pricing power those who have a product differentiation they have a pricing power if they are not able to differentiate their product, they, they won't have any pricing power so if they won't have any pricing power their profit margin will be very low so this is the uh, the uh, uh, conclusion so uh, in a in a perf- uh, in a monopolistically uh, competitive market a profitable firm will always set a price which is higher than its average total cost and the difference will be its profit so profit price is here and this is average total cost so average total cost is here and uh, mr is cutting mc here so a line uh, that connects the demand curve and quantity is this so this much quantity will be sold and the difference between cost and price will be so this is just similar to the uh, monopoly chart that we have seen in the case of monopoly that in monopoly also the demand ar curve and mr curve are uh, downward sloping 
and uh, the point where MC cuts MR is the uh, optimal point. At this point, this is the profit, uh, which is the difference between price and average total cost. And if the uh, average total cost is higher than the price, that in that case, the firm will make a loss. So uh, this chart depicts a firm which is making loss because average total cost is higher than the, uh, its price, the price at which it is selling. So if the typical firm earns positive profits, new firms will enter into the industry in the long run. So if there is a particular industry uh, in which uh, uh, a lot of firms are earning a lot of abnormal profits, the business is very, very good. In that case, new firms will enter into that industry. Shifting each existing firm's demand curve to the left. If the typical firm incurs losses, some existing firms will exit the industry in the long run, shifting the demand curve of each remaining firm to the right. So this uh, process keeps happening that uh, if in a particular industry, the profit margin is very high, then new players will enter into that market and, that, and the supply uh, increases and the profit will decrease of every firm. Uh, then um, uh, some, some uh, players may exit from that market and uh, uh, that will uh, uh, increase the profit level of the uh, rest of the firm uh, that survive in that industry. So in the long run, equilibrium of a monopolistically competitive industry is zero profit equilibrium. Uh, firms just break even. The typical firm's demand curve is just tangent to its average total cost at its profit maximizing output. So in the long run, just like uh, perfect competition, uh, in monopolistic competition also, uh, in the long run, the profit is zero. So in, just keep this in mind that in this case, we are talking about economic profit, not about accounting profit economic profit or abnormal profit uh, in which uh, we are uh, we are uh, you know in economic profit we also incorporate the reward for entrepreneurship if there is no reward for entrepreneurship no nobody will undertake enterprising activity so there should be some reward for undertaking enterprising activities so in economic profit uh, we take that into account that there should be uh, some reward for the entrepreneurs those who are the risk takers, those who are enterprising, those who are, uh, uh, you know, able to start something new, uh, those who are able to bring innovation in the market, new yeah. product, new service. So this is depiction of the same thing that uh, uh, entry of new firms eliminates the profit. So in the short run, uh, a particular firm may earn a profit. But in the long run, uh, because of the entry of uh, new firms, the profit of a particular single firm declines. And in the long run, every firm uh, operates at the point of tangency. Point of tangency is the point where price is equal to average total cost. So this average total cost curve is touching the, the price uh, line at this point. And uh, in the long run, most of the firms operate at this level where price is equal to average total cost. I mean, they are not able to earn uh, abnormal profit or extra profit uh, consistently. So if in, in short run, uh, the profit, uh, abnormal profit is possible in the short run, uh, the, the profit. Just let me give you one example uh, in the Indian market recently that uh, because uh, in, in China, uh, a lot because of environmental concerns, a lot of uh, uh, crackdown happened because of which a lot of uh, uh, demand for chemicals shifted to India. So during the last uh, one, uh, two years or one and a half year, uh, chemical industry in India has performed very well. So they have reported a very, you know, extra normal profit. Their profits have, you know, doubled, tripled and more than that. But uh, this will not continue uh, for more time because, uh, because of the profitability, because of the demand in that industry and new firms will enter into that business. A lot of new, uh, you know, businesses will enter into that industry that will push the margin lower. Uh, uh, and uh, so in the short run, in monopolistically competitive market, extra normal profit is possible. 
but in the long run it is not possible because in the long run uh, the entry and exit of the firm uh, happens uh, that impacts the profitability of the existing firms so monopolistic competition and perfect competition share the characteristic that in the long run equilibrium firms earn zero economic profit so on this point uh, perfect competition and monopolistic competition are same however there are two uh, important differences between long run equilibrium in the two markets the first difference is monopolistically competitive firms charge a price greater than marginal cost uh, so in monopolistically competitive market the price is more than marginal cost but in perfect competition the price is just equal to the marginal cost because the uh, marginal cost uh, uh, because the price is a is a straight line uh, that is also average revenue line so so the price is just uh, equal to the marginal cost but in monopolistically competitive market the uh, price is higher than marginal cost this is first difference and this is the second difference monopolistically competitive firms do not produce at minimum average total cost so the level of production in monopolistically competitive market is not uh, the minimum point of the total average cost so let us see how this looks in in the form of a chart so uh, this is the chart on the on the left hand side we have a chart for perfect competition uh, where mc uh, is cutting uh, ac and that point is also the point of price so price is equal to price is equal to the marginal cost so this is the feature of perfect competition but in monopolistic competition uh, price is higher than marginal cost so marginal cost is here but the price is higher than marginal cost so this is one difference another difference is another difference between perfect competition and monopolistic competition is that uh, monopolistically competitive market firms do not produce at minimum average total cost so minimum average total cost is this point uh, monopolistic competitions have excess uh, excess capacity uh, in their plants so basically they can sell uh, quantity qpc but they are actually selling qmc so the the quantity that they are selling is lower uh so this is another point of differentiation uh, between perfect competition and uh, 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 monopolistic competition uh i'm very sorry for the you know, uh, internet disturbance today because internet connection uh, uh, i was late to join and uh, there was dis disturbance if you have any question and query you can make No, thank sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Hello. Thank you. So, can sir. we say in monopolistic competition, a monopolist has the autonomy for the price decision? Some pricing power. I mean, they try to gain pricing power through product differentiation. But okay, in perfect sir. competition, they don't have any pricing power. The only way through which uh, a firm can gain pricing power in monopolistic competition is through product differentiation. the more uh, once offering is different the more uh, prices uh, that firm can charge okay thank you very much thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir Excuse me, sir.